Hey there fellow adult collectors, welcome back. David Eon here with another virtual video tour of a vintage Toy Fair catalog. This time the Marx 1978 Toy Fair catalog, which once upon a time belonged to Joanna's Dolls and Things. I wonder if they still exist. Whether they do or not, it's my catalog now and I'm going to share it with you here today and we are going to look at every page in the catalog starting off right here and you can see how fresh this catalog is they barely used this if at all maybe they looked through it once so I'm gonna to have to actually hold this because it's not gonna stay open but as I said I'm gonna show every page of the catalog it starts off with some really kitty stuff but it goes into the ready gang toy guns play sets there's a lot of great stuff in here and I do show every page because memories still get triggered you may have had one of these when you were a kid and you may remember this I think it's cool that the fire truck comes with a little phone for the kid too if you see that there he can take his calls more of these little vehicles and remember Vehicles was a big thing for Marx at the time because of big wheel and there are a lot of really interesting big wheels in here as well. Look at the little bike there. Little play top rider ride on there. These are neat too and there is a big collector market for this stuff too. Little chopper motorcycle, the turtle and the head pops in and out as you drive. That's kind of neat. couple more little kitty ride-ons and then a tractor it says little big tractor over here on the right it's got a lot of dials and controls I've been seeing more and more people interested in this stuff recently especially boxed and believe it or not boxed examples do still exist albeit they are extremely expensive in the box and there's your little Grand Runner pedal car. The Grand Prix is what they're suggesting. Did you have any ride-ons like this when you were a kid? I had a motorized one. I probably used it once. I don't even remember using it. I remember it always sitting in the corner. For some reason, my mother didn't want to charge it. It says Marks has the action. Yes, they do. That kid is ready to go and here we are. Whiz Wheel. Come on. That is cool. It says Whiz Wheel Vehicle. Children love the crazy fun as they spin and whirl around bumping into other Whiz Wheels. I see. So everybody in the neighborhood was supposed to have one. You know those plastic wheels don't last. <laughs> Anybody have a big wheel? I always remember they were ground up that the holes would form in the wheels and that's the green machine I remember the green machine because you were supposed to be able to pull those brake levers and spin out I mean this is toy history people don't make these kind of toys anymore I mean they're out there but it's not like it was battery operated turbo racer ride on now you're talking that's cool. That's cool. They don't show a kid in it for scale. It says rechargeable battery complete with child proof recharging unit and the charge holds for eight hours. Wow, that's not bad for the 70s. And here's your classic big wheels. <laughs> I love the, uh, the school photo day pictures that they did with these kids with the with these big wheel bikes that's kind of a neat approach <laughs> anyways big wheel mini cycle and big wheel little cycle so these are the toddler versions as you can tell from the photos still having to hold this big wheel Scorcher cycle on the top there. If I can just get that to hold still, 
Scorcher Cycle. And then the classic big wheel right here. The classic big wheel. The one that most kids had. And the big wheel sweetheart. And you know I actually have a big wheel commercial compilation on this channel. Maybe I'll put a link to it at the end of this video so that you can check that out if you've never seen it. Those classic commercials are kind of fun. And the big wheel champion. Look at that. I never had a big wheel when I was a kid, when I was growing up. I wanted one. And you know there were novelty bikes like this too, like they did um, Knight Rider and things like that as a big wheel. Character designs, if you will. But this is just classic 70s. Toys like this were a major part of the 70s. Zazum Motor. Okay, so I guess it's a motor, a fake motor that you can put on your big wheel or your bicycle to give it engine sounds. That's interesting. I don't remember this. I guess it beats putting uh, baseball cards in your spokes, right? Super Shot Racers. Warlock and Barbarian. Two realistically detailed drag cars. Complete down to their fuel injectors. Pull the cord and they will accelerate up to 65 feet. Okay. There's a rip cord on the back there, you see, and it's a detached cord. Sounds like something easily broken to me. You know how rough kids are on toys, or they used to be. More super shot racers, a couple of Formula One cars, and a couple of off road racers. Same basic design. Pull the cord and watch them fly. And side racers. Same concept. And it says this one simulates stunt racing. Pull the cord and watch the Trans Am roar away, suddenly flip up onto two wheels, and then down on all four again. Interesting. Flying Furies and Sky Heroes. The Flying Furies are the birds, obviously. And then Sky Heroes. you got a couple of Marvel and DC characters there. Essentially, it's a paper airplane with a slingshot. Or vinyl, rather than paper. See? pull it back and let it go and it, it glides for a short distance. Command Drive Dirt Bike. This is what we had before handheld video games. <laughs> and you, you turn the things and control the direction of the little driver there as this dirt track rolls towards you. They don't make stuff like this at all anymore, I don't think. That's really cool though. <laughs> I like that. Clash of the Cosmic Robots. Basically Rock'em Sock'em which has been done in many incarnations over the years. There are a lot of different varieties of Rock'em Sock'em robots. And this is just one of them.
and storage box play sets, something that Marx is really known for. And these are these are cool. When you were a kid, these were awesome. And there you have the Bravo Squad. You know, toy soldiers and tanks on a play mat, essentially. Red River. Cowboys and Indians. As you know, even in the 70s, you were still coming off of the whole concept of Cowboys and Indians. Back in the 50s, half of the television dramas were westerns. And so that concept hung around for a very long time. Tactical Air Command. That looks cool. Tactical Air Command. And then Star Station 7. If I was going to pick one of these four, I think this would be the one I would want. Star Station 7. These sets are hard to find complete now, too. Those uh, Mark's play sets. And I know there's a big collector's market for them, too. But there's a lot of them in here. Battleground on the top here. I'll try to get that in tight. Battleground. Recreate World War II battle scenes with this big playset, including two armies equipped with vehicles and artillery, barbed wire fences, bunkers, trees, and more. Recreate World War II, why don't you? <laughs> Fort Apache. Look at that. Fort Apache. And I, I like how they want to make it clear that that's an actual building and they got a door opening to demonstrate. I doubt there's anything in the building, but you can put figures in it. And then down here, prehistoric dinosaur playset. That looks like something else that I would really want. That looks cool. Prehistoric dinosaur playset. And they still make sets like this, similar to it, but it's not as big as it was. I don't know if it ever will be. Again, not in the age of video games. Now next is a very desirable set to a lot of Mark's collectors and that's Navarone. And as you can see, there's a lot going on with this set. You have all the military figures and vehicles and you have this mountain defense station with a detailed interior. I bet you it's hard to find that flag. <laughs> I bet it's almost like pulling teeth to find this set complete at all. And it shows you that it has multiple levels on the inside, including an elevator. That's really cool. See, I would want that set as well. But you can't overlook what's on the bottom of the page here. Look at this. The Martian Landing. Martian Landing. Rugged Martian landscape on a crater-filled three-dimensional terrain. Because it's not a flat surface, as you see. I mean, there's a mat here. But on top of the mat is like a blow mold, plastic blow mold, little mountain that you set on top of it. That's pretty cool. I know everything's cool, right? But I love looking at these catalogs and I'm a big vintage toy enthusiast. Are you ready for the Ready Gang? <laughs> the Ready Gang. It says, here come the Ready Gang all set to fight it out in this authentically recreated Western setting. Look at this. Just trying to keep that uh, flat. Kind of looks like Yul Brenner a little bit right there, that one guy. If you remember Yul Brenner. So we got who? The Sundown Kid, 
and his horse dagger. It looks like they were sold separately because they have different stock numbers. So Sundown Kid and Dagger. And again, packaging weights and dimensions. I think that's interesting too. If you noticed, it says packed in a case of six with an 11.74 pounds. And then uh, cubic dimensions for when you have to order. Ringo and Thunder. And it says figure assortment packed 12. So I guess there were two different packaging styles for this set. Ringo and Thunder. Not Ringo Star. A different Ringo. Black Hawk and an Indian horse. Trooper Gibson and his horse Midnight. And then down here, you got the horse and wagon, and this is the gun runner wagon. And they show you in the next picture the wagon has like these compartments <laughs> with rifles in the boxes. Pretty neat. And I know you saw it the Action Town playset, and that's the interior because you saw the exterior on the previous page. Mostly you saw it. I know they didn't show you too much of the exterior there, but this is the interior. It looks like uh, cardboard cutouts. Action Town playset. Simulated bank teller, I guess. Gotta be able to rob the bank in your western town, right? Look at that. Guns, guns, guns. That's incredible. They, they don't do this anymore, guys. You know, toy guns was a big part of culture back in the day. You know, from the late 40s to about the mid to late 70s. And then in, in the 80s, they, they killed it. It was killed by an act of Congress because they didn't want you to be able to rob a store or a bank with a toy gun. And fool, you know, you, you take a toy gun, it looks really realistic. Somebody doesn't notice the difference. I, I guess people don't know the difference between a toy and a real gun. And I, I can see that if you're not familiar with firearms. It's got some, uh, Western style down here as well. See right here how the West was one rifle. And that's interesting because at the same time in 1978, Mattel was making how the West was one action figures. But I guess the license got split because they made the gun here. Those are really interesting. But that's your packaging details for the guns that are pictured up above. But I, I guess someone in Congress decided that they would rather you robbed with a real gun instead of a toy one. <laughs> and they, they made all these regulations about the manufacturing and the presentation of toy guns and the industry just changed. It was too much of a hassle so they stopped making them. Kick fire rifle. I mean, you can still buy them, but it's just not the same. And kids don't really play with them like all that anymore. But it was a big cultural phenomenon for several decades. And this is like the tail end of it. Flickery tickery. Basically, it's a uh, magic motion little toy watches for kids. And then down here, and this is a little confusing, I kind of remember these. I want to say I remember seeing these. It's a watch. It says play watch. It says the watch actually works, but then it says that it only keeps time for two hours. So you wind it up, it works for two hours, and then it's a dud. <laughs> I don't get it, but interesting character designs, and I'm sure those superhero ones are pretty desirable in today's market. Marks entertains 
the little ones in another like school photo day looking shot there. Actually, these are much better than you would get in your school photos, so I shouldn't insult Marx's photography. Look at this. Old woman in a shoe game. That's cool. I know there's people that collect vintage games. I'm not a fan, really, of vintage board games, primarily because how do you store them? I mean, you can only keep so many board games, and it just starts to get stupid. But unless you have a way to accommodate it. But for me, I just don't want that many games. But weird novelty games like this, there's an appeal to it, I think. Look at this one. Ladybug fly away. <laughs> Little pump on there, and I guess the balloon fills up. And then run, mousy, run. And you've got what looks like a roulette table with a mouse on it and cheese wedges on little trays. I wonder how that's played. Crazy looking games like that. They appeal to me. See, now that looks cool too. Look at this. It says the banana tree, and it's like barrel of monkeys, but you got a whole tree to hang them on, and a little spinner and everything. I miss the days of board games, to be honest, because this is something else that kids have lost interest in because of video culture. Peek-a-book. Peek-a-book, a unique concept in preschool toys. Favorite nursery rhymes are acted out in stages. That's what this is. I don't know if they ever made that. But yeah, video game culture and digital culture has really shrunk interest in a lot of this. Humpty Dumpty Oops a Bumps game and Animals Away. See, like that Humpty Dumpty would appeal to me. Because it's just weird. It's like a playset rather than a board game. And I think by children not having stuff like this anymore or not being interested, they're losing a lot. Bath time Bobby's Treasure Island. Bath time Bobby's Riverboat. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Tub toys. Do kids play with tub toys anymore? I had the Fisher Price yacht that I used to bring in the bathtub when I was really young. I remember that thing. I don't have one anymore. I'm, I, I always mean to look for one because if I found one I would get it. Find a complete yacht in really good shape I would get it. No, I would not take it into the tub but I would get it. And this looks pretty cool actually. Popo's Play Park. It's another board game I guess. Join the delightful world of the Popos. These unique figures interlock to pop into each other's arms, pop onto each other's shoulders, or pop snugly onto the fanciful structures in this beautifully designed Popos playset. Okay, so it's just an imagination toy. Again, this is pretty cool. I would give this to a little kid. Young parents. Don't be so dismissive as to just give your child a cell phone to keep them occupied. It's a mistake. Speaking as someone who once upon a time was the director of a daycare and also the director of a correctional facility for the Juvenile Justice Authority. It's messing these kids up. Let them be children. That looks cool. 7-Up Bottleneck Game. See? That would appeal to me as a board game. Well, it's not really a board game, but you get, you get my point. That looks like something I would collect if I collected games. I really don't. I don't have much in the way of games. But that's just cool. And it's advertising. Look at this! Happy birthday cake game. That's neat. That just looks neat. All kids love birthdays. I suppose. It depends. When I was a kid, I didn't have birthdays, so I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know how it feels to actually have a birthday like all that where there's a party and a cake and everything. But I imagine for a lot of children, it means a lot. And that says Plum Crazy Game. Kind of looks like Mousetrap, doesn't it? Zany game of strategy. Zany game of strategy and luck. Be the first player to link up the pipes from your water utensil to the water tower without your opponent diverting you in the wrong direction. Okay, so when they say plum, they mean like a plumber. See, these are some of the some really cool children's games, I think. Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. Marbles. And then over here is the cat's eye. Which kind of looks familiar to me. Cat's eye. Moving right along. Popcorn game. I guess you press the little buttons to flip the marbles up. And Monster Mania. That's neat. Players take turns spinning the disc of creation in Frankenstein's head to match the features that appear on their own colorful monster mask. That's interesting. That kind of looks like Alfred E. Newman. And the tortoise and the hare game here. As we move right along, you know we're more than halfway through this catalog. And I hope you're enjoying that. Do you enjoy these catalog tours? I know it doesn't get a huge audience from our us usual viewership. But as long as people are, are enjoying these, I don't mind doing it. I don't mind showing off these catalogs and letting you see the toys that are in it. It may remind you, these are handheld games, obviously, pre-video handheld toy games. And I like how they show you how they come packaged here. But as long as people are enjoying it and, you know, it triggers memories. Sometimes people like get comments where they're like, I really, I remember seeing that, I think I had this, or that looks like something I would want, or I'm, I'm going to look for that. Just stimulating some interest or triggering some memories. I think that's pretty cool. A couple of little pinball games, tabletop pinball. I like pinball. I like pinball machines. But, you know, I grew up in that era. I grew up when video games were first coming into stores and arcades were first forming based around video games. More tabletop. It says Casino Pinball Game. Electric Pinball. Or Electro, rather. Electro Pinball. A more of a traditional sized table there and that's some great artwork on it that's some really nice artwork and to show the kids playing it you can't tell that those kids are like on their knees but <laughs> that's probably how they're doing it because that thing doesn't look very tall but still, I would have liked to have had that as a kid. Power Pro. The machines are getting larger and larger. Look at this thing. Power Pro Pinball. How would you like to be an 8-year-old with that? And I don't think he's kneeling. That thing is kind of tall.
little bit more of a rudimentary design on the artwork. Kind of reminds me of the pinball machine from the counting shorts on Classic Sesame Street. Shark Shoot. I don't remember that. I remember Marks making these kind of toy guns locked into a device kind of shooting games. And you see there is a shark in there. Shark Shoot. And then what's this one? Target Land. With a little rifle. A little blue rifle and the little darts. And Magic Shot. And that's the one with the magnetic little marbles, I think. Or, not marbles. Little BBs. Getting close to the end here, guys. Frenzy game. And that's like Plinko, it looks like. Sort of a Plinko game. And Rattlin Gatlin Shooting Gallery. Another one of those enclosed shooting units. And you see this like little Western characters hiding inside of the unit. I think these are highly sought after by collectors as well. Those old kind of shooting gallery games. Bowling! Electronic bowling. And that's a big toy, actually. It doesn't look like it, looking straight at it, but this ball is a ball you hold in your hand. It's like the size of a golf ball. Here we go, look. See? This is a big toy. I bet it wasn't cheap. You can have a bowling alley in your own home. Marks presents the most realistic home bowling game ever devised. Electronics brings you the action of a real bowling alley. Where would you display this if you got this now? <laughs> Still, that's really neat. I like that. And it's Cindy's World. And I believe this is the last item in the catalog is the Marks Cindy doll. It says, meet Cindy, a new friend for little girls with a whole world to share. And they've got a big spread on this because I think this is where they're introducing Cindy for the first time. And there is a bedroom and all of these are sold separately, obviously. You're not going to buy the bedroom, but you've got to get everything. The, the wardrobe, vanity, the bed, bedside table set, all sold separately. Any Cindy doll collectors out there? Somebody is. She probably doesn't go for that much. I've noticed that a lot of these old uh, dolls, certain ones, they're not that expensive. Dining room, break front, dining table. I like the eye to detail on this, so I mean, it's not my wheelhouse, but I do appreciate when they put a lot of effort into something. Look at that. It's got a whole silverware set. Plates, candlesticks. I mean, they went through a lot of trouble to articulate this. Glasses. So that you could do more with the doll. Mod kitchen, refrigerator, sink, range, and wall oven. I think Mark's trying to give Barbie a run for her money here. Even has simulated food in the refrigerator. That's a nice touch. And the sink works. It says uh, sink with chain and plug that allows water to drain realistically into the garbage bucket. Interesting. And again, that's what I mean about just really investing in the detail of the toy, not skimping. Ow. 
okay, bathroom, bathtub and washstand, and obviously the tub kind of works. That's pretty cool. And then over here, love seat, armchair, and music center. And the music center, that is the uh, this section right here, it says it's a real working AM radio. So you can actually play music on it. Excellent. Coming down to the end here. Scene setter. So rather than a house, it's like a cutout block. So that you can build like an apartment or something. And Cindy's having dinner with Cindy, and they're all Cindy. They didn't show much in the way of fashions, unless it's on another page. Because I know on this one is, on this next page here, you probably saw, it's the Let's Get Married outfit. I don't see a male, so who's she marrying? Is she stealing Ken? Could be. Here's your fashions. I was wondering. As you know, you make all your money off of the clothing and accessories when you run a doll line. And what does Cindy do for a living? Well, equestrian riding, I suppose. Because there's Cindy's horse. They don't tell you the name of the horse, just that it's Cindy's horse. Okay. And some gear to clean up after the horse. I love how they give you a floor broom and a bucket to clean up after the horse for, you know, simulated poo. And guys, that's it. That is the end of the catalog, and that was 79 pages of 1978 Toy Fair goodness from Mark's, Mark's Toys. So I gotta ask you, did you see anything in there that just really stood out for you? Any memories jump out? Do you remember having any of this stuff? And you're just like, wow, I remember that. Did it spark your interest to maybe look for it again? Is there something you saw that you've never seen before that maybe now you're interested in it and you're like, hey, I'd like to look into that. Maybe, I, maybe that's something I would like to collect. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. If you like the catalog tour, let me know. Um, also, there are several others. Look at the playlists. I've done several of these and I have more catalogs yet to come. And we do more than catalog tours. If you're new to the channel, we do a lot here. We do a lot here for nostalgia and for the, the adult collector. Discussions and showcases and unboxings and all sorts of things. So please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. And again, share your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed that, and what more can I say, but thanks for watching, and we will see you again soon.